Our message today is really quite simple. We have this wonderful, wonderful set of readings. We have this wonderful commemoration as we launch into the season of Pentecost, the longest season of the church year. And we are also looking at this moment, this day, Trinity Sunday, a wonderful day, Trinity Sunday, in which we celebrate the Trinity. Sometimes in some churches, for example, today, they would read the Athanasian Creed, which is just about as impossible to understand as anything in the prayer book. But it is a wonderful celebration of this notion of what does it mean to be Trinity? What does it mean to have this God who is three faces, three persons in one God, in this unity in our divinity? Some people call this a mystery. I remember when I was in the seminary, we weren't allowed to say the word mystery until the last five minutes of class. For the first three hours of any class, we had to work through every single theological concept that anybody brought up. And we couldn't say, it's a mystery, until the last five minutes of class. And in some ways, it is a mystery. It's not something that's easy to understand. I remember my son, Seamus, when he was five years old, he said, well, it's kind of like God's head has three faces. And depending on which one you're talking to, are you talking to the Father over here, or are you talking to the Son over here, or the Holy Spirit back there? And I said, not really great theology, but you're leaning into it. It's still the same God. It just depends on what God we're, we're, we're thinking of, what God we're contemplating, what God we're engaging. Are we engaging the God who is the Creator, who provides this wonderful wellspring of all things that we need, this, this extraordinary energy and this wonderful gift of life and existence? Or are we dealing with God the Redeemer in Jesus Christ, this person who is our Savior, who opens up eternal life to all of us, who opens up the, the, the bonds of hell and lets everyone come into this place of, of eternal life and eternal love in God's eternal presence? Or is it the Holy Spirit? The advocate, the breath of God that inspires us all to continue to stay in good relationships with God and with each other. Trinity. God was not one time. God was not one time. God was not a later time. God was always eternal God. But we understand God's creative energies and God's redemptive power and God's inspiring voice that continues to engage us. Trinity is also relationship. God in relationship with one another. The, I think it was St. Um, Saint August, no, Saint, it was St. Thomas Aquinas who said, there is God the lover, God the beloved, and God the love between them that just is so intense that it spills out into all creation. Just some extraordinary thoughts about the theology of Trinity. And I think it invites us into this notion of how do we enter into this relationship? Because in this relationship of God, in this Trinity, this wonderful triangle, we are also brought into relationship. And to be in a good, healthy relationship means to be adopted by God. You were chosen. I was chosen. All of creation was chosen by God, was included by God, was loved by God, was made family by God. And we are brought into relationship. Our identity is not just about me and not just about us, but it's about that relationship that we have with God. In my interpersonal communications class here at Gannon, sometimes we talk about how is it, how, how can we enhance and be good in a relationship? And a couple of theor theorists, Argyle and Henderson, said that healthy relationships rely on 10 things. These are 10 things God's giving to us. Are they 10 things that we're giving back to God though as well? It says, they say that we should show support. God certainly shows us support in the presence of Christ, John 3, right? Do we seek support from one another? Do we know that we can turn to God for support and for love and for assurance? Do we respect the privacy of one another? I don't know that God needs my privacy, but I do sometimes have to respect that I need some privacy sometimes. I need to be disassociated even though I'm in that relationship? Do we keep confidences? And do I trust that God keeps my confidences? Do I feel like I can be honest with God and know that God will protect and honor that confidence? Do we defend one another? I know God defends me, but do I always defend God when I hear people confront my faith? 
Do we avoid public criticism of one another? Do I make fun of God? Do I deny God? Do I get angry at God in front of other people? God can take it. But is that a healthy way to be in relationship? Do I make my friends happy? God simply wants to be worshipped. Is that so much? God simply wants to be loved and appreciated. Do I appreciate the beauty in nature, the wonderful gifts I have in my life? With all of my challenges, I woke up today. That's a pretty wonderful thing. Do we manage our jealousy of one another? I don't know that God's very jealous of me, but sometimes I am jealous of the power that God has. Sometimes I'm envious of that kind of power. Do we share humor? I think God has a great sense of humor. Take a look around. Have you seen the people we walk around with? God has a wonderful sense of humor. And I think sometimes we have to also laugh with God and then feel that we, we can also share that humor with him. And also, do we maintain equity? Not equality. I don't think of myself as equal to God. Jesus himself did not see himself as equal to God, but equity involved with God. Jesus became one of us to show that equity that the divine wants to have with us. Do I share my equity with God and church? Do I share my good resources? Do I engage with healthy ministry? And do I support the ministries of those who are in my church and doing good things in the world? This notion of Trinity Sunday brings us into that evaluation and that, that perspective of assessment of do I live a healthy life. Am I in good relationship with God? God so loved the world that he sent his son. That sounds like God really wants a relationship with me. Am I doing my best to be in good and right relationship with God? It's got to be tough to be a trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three. Let's make room for that in our relationship with God as well. And let's be better friends with God. Amen.